is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Mindless Horror Podcast. Uh, with me, as always, is my co-host, Sammy. How you doing, Sammy? Uh, you know, it could be a better night tonight, but you know what? We, we, this is blessed now. We have a blessed night now. There we go, yeah. Um, we are joined today by another fabulous uh, home haunt. And we're excited because we keep saying throughout the uh, entire season that if it weren't for home haunts, like Halloween probably wouldn't be a thing this year. They're the ones that really stepped up and saved it this year, and we cannot thank them more. Today, join us from Drex Society, Sean. How you doing, Sean? Hey, I'm good, thanks. I'm just happy we're in sweater weather now. <laughs> I know, right? It just mm-hmm. 70 degrees for the rest of the week, and then next week I already looked. It's going to be going back to the 90s. I'm like, what are you, California? Yeah. <laughs> figure your weather it's out. It's okay. I haven't seen a day under 100 in uh weeks so months <laughs> so <laughs> we're almost out. uh sean how you doing today man i'm good thanks it's just been super busy we've been doing build the entire week which is one of the reasons we're happy that the weather is finally cool enough because if we had started the week prior we would have been dead <laughs> just all together dead but it's it's been awesome we were able to pull everything out uh we were able to set everything up the only thing we had to do is some painting scenic design uh set up the rooms and we're good to go awesome man i mean and it's october finally almost pretty much midway Mm -hmm. through october you guys are going to be opening soon um let's talk a little bit uh before we jump into this year's because i'm very excited to talk about this year's it's gonna be like the first time we actually experience it like all the way through i want to talk a little Mm -hmm. bit about uh last year's event um first time we ever got uh, introduced to you guys was at Midsummer Scream, um, mm-hmm. and we got to what immediately caught my attention going through the Hall of Shadows was the big movie theater style marquee with all the oh, posters yeah. <laughs> and and you know all these amazing iconic films. How was that, man? I mean, that maze like you brought a lot of iconic films to life, man. And how how is that doing that every year? Mm-hmm. It was, um, well, this is the first year that we've done an IP-based maze in a while. I mean, we've had inspiration. So like a few years ago, we did Dark Christmas. That was obviously inspired by Krampus. Um, uh, The year prior, we did Seance. A lot of people don't know this, but that was actually inspired by a found footage movie called Grave Encounters. Yeah, that was uh, that was big. A lot of people didn't really catch on, and I was totally fine with that because it's one of my favorite horror movies. Um, so I'm like, yes, I was able to do something that a lot of people don't re- realize was there. Um, so to actually tackle these films was a bit daunting because we had some ideas that we were going to do, and we immediately had to throw out because we're, it either didn't work the way we wanted to, or it just became way too expensive. Um, one of the ideas that we originally had was we were going to feature Evil Dead 2, and we were going to have a bridge with a uh, tunnel, a cylinder tunnel spinning around you. And we were going to have an actor in there dressed as Ash, like screaming, oh, what make it? how do we make it stop? And the ending of the maze, you would have been surrounded by a bunch of guys in suits of armor hailing Ash from Army of Darkness. So, <laughs> so been a, like a clean setup for Army of Darkness, man. I love oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you got to love that Evil Dead trilogy, man. It's just oh, yeah. so freaking phenomenal. I mean, it mm-hmm. gets comedic each one. You know, that first one, they were obviously trying to go for that that horror movie, but it's such a cult classic, such a beautiful film. And then, you know, the second movie, they, they put in a little bit of the dark humor in, which works well with um, oh, yeah. with Bruce Campbell, man. That guy really knows how to carry that kind of stuff, man. Mm-hmm. So, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so, yeah, the, you know, like I said, last year, that was actually one of the mazes in the Hall of Shadows that just caught my attention immediately. Like, I saw a giant marquee, and I'm just like, wow. Mm-hmm. I'm like, look at all those films that are probably <laughs> featured in there. This is like, and I would... It was just such a fun time. I remember seeing a lot of the behind the scenes mm-hmm. photos on your guys' Instagram from last oh, yeah. year too, Thanks. of yeah. all the characters that you had in there. That mm-hmm. was really cool. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, so, how did the the year go last year for you guys, as far as the full haunt went after mm-hmm. Midsummer Scream? Uh, full haunt went really, really well. Uh, we were open for three nights. Uh, first night, it was about half busy, so we had a solid group for about two and a half, three hours out of the four hours we were open. Halloween, we were consistently slammed. We actually had a line all the way to our gate up until the time we closed at 10. And we were like, okay, let's shut it down. And then I look down the street and I go, oh crap, there's more people coming. So we actually had to reopen the haunt from about 10.30 to 11.10, 11.15. And then our third night, it was a little bit slow, but we still had some straddlers come in and they're like, hey, we went through on Halloween. We want to know if we could go again, but alone. And I was like, okay, you want to get scared? Come, come, come for it. <laughs> go through it yourself, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> How long, how long yeah. did it take you guys to uh, to build the whole marquee? Because that was a really big setup. Uh, the marquee actually takes about a day and a half to two days to do. Because uh, do you remember the ticket booth right in the front? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
So originally we weren't going to have the ticket booth. That was actually going to be further back um, on, the, on the wall of the facade in between the doors. We quickly realized that this thing was so heavy that if we didn't pull it forward and rest the uh, marquee on top, the whole thing would just implode in on itself. It would just collapse. So we did a little bit of engine. We had to do a little bit of extra engineering actually. And after about three, four days, the initial setup in our backyard, we said, okay, this is good. Let's take it to midsummer. We got it up in about a day. <laughs> And then when we did a uh, setup, we did a promo video earlier this summer with uh, Bellows Haunts. And uh, at the end of that video, you'll see us, it's like this found footage thing kind of as a small promotion for us because we wanted something to do for the summer. Um, that only took maybe four hours to set up. Okay. Yeah, so we got it down. Quick, nice build. I mean, and it worked out good. It looked good. I can tell you that. Thanks. I mean, yeah. I, I enjoyed it. I mean, like I said, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm obviously, and I can tell yourself, you're obviously a, a film fanatic. I, I love watching films. Oh, yeah. Films. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I think this world would be very boring without them. You know what I mean? Like, films mm -hmm. are no, like almost like sports. They're like a pastime to keep us entertained. So, um, mm -hmm. I mean, just seeing some of these iconic films. What'd you have in there? You had The Shining. You had yeah, Shining, Alien, Aliens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we had us. Uh, yeah. Was it Friday the Thirteenth Part Two, or that was just on the marquee? Oh no, we did uh, Friday the Thirteenth Part Two and part two. Three. And part the two and three. the only reason we did uh, we put Part Two and Three on the marquee is if Jason wasn't in the room, we were going to actually just have um, uh, our main guy who plays Jason. He's about six four. Right. And if he wasn't in the room, we were going to have another guy roll in. We're in the burlap sack from part two. Nice. And so we were going to exchange it. But unfortunately, that didn't work out. So we were like, eh, it's fine. We still have Mother's Shrine in there. So we just, it was, it worked. It worked. That's <laughs> it all that worked. matters right there, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it came out great. Um, so for Midsummer Scream, obviously, you got to bring like a nice little preview of what mm -hmm. people can expect. What, uh, what goes into doing that, man? I mean, because I know. You must want to add a lot of stuff for that preview for people to see, but you have to cut oh, yeah. so much good stuff in the process. So how, what's the hardest part of, of cutting all, like a lot of the stuff you want to put in? The hardest part is trying to figure out which gags we want to feature at Midsummer and which ones we want to save just for the haunt. Right. Um, the, a good example is this year. Unfortunately, I can't really talk about what the effect was going to be because we're going to debut it next year. Uh, we're currently uh, building it to see if it'll work. But that was one effect where we're like, okay, we don't have the elevator anymore. We need to replace that with something to kind of whet everybody's appetite. Right. And then after that, it's, okay, what worked at Midsummer and what didn't work? And how can we modify some of the scares so that way it's completely new? Definitely. No, I, mm -hmm. I think that's, I mean, from what it sounds, man, you, you really go all out with this. And that's awesome, man, because... Uh, we actually, Sammy and I got into the uh, home haunt game last year. We didn't get to really experience some of them, but um, mm -hmm. this year I'm so fortunate that uh, a lot of stuff got canceled, so I can actually go out and experience mm -hmm. them. And I can tell you this right now. I mean, I you know I know I'm gonna love these because you guys are keeping Halloween alive. So just getting scared in general, I'm all mm -hmm. for that. And especially you guys. I mean, this guy, this year's theming is just amazing i love the the oh, plans yeah. you guys have for this <laughs> year i mean you guys are taking it back to like freaking the greatest age of horror in my my opinion honestly mm -hmm. so okay. um talk to us a little bit of the, about the process mm -hmm. from going out of last year you guys had this successful mm -hmm. kind of movie uh realm kind of thing idea which i thought mm -hmm. it was an amazing thing going into to the next year like okay how can we step it up mm -hmm the next year how can we uh that was a really solid year how can we make it even better mm -hmm. so it's funny you mentioned that uh we were actually not intending to do fear fest 41 with all the classic monsters right. until our first day at midsummer last year once we saw the reaction to the movie theater facade and how everybody absolutely loved what we did we had a meeting at the hotel and we we're like okay we really have to bring this thing back even if it kills us and so there were three distinct ideas that we put on the table uh, obviously, the one that we went with, Fear Fest 1941, the classic Universal Monsters. If we went with the other two, these are the ones that you could have possibly had. The first one was uh, Fear Fest 89 Part 2, and that was going to be four more hor um, 80s horror movies. And that in and of itself was just really difficult because there's so many different movies to choose from. But if I remember right, the four that we had chosen was it was going to be uh, The Lost Boys. Uh, the elevator would have been back with uh, My Bloody Valentine. Uh, Hellraiser, and our finale room would have been Night of the Creeps. 
such solid property yeah. right there, man. <laughs> I hope yeah. uh, I hope one day I don't know how you guys are gonna feel after this year, but I hope one day we get to see that come to life now. Because I've been dying for something Lost Boys. So I mean, you got me. On oh Lost yeah, Boys, no, man. exactly. <laughs> Thanks. Um, if we went with the the second idea, it would have been uh, Fear Fest '99, and we would have done four '90s horror movies, and that would have been Candyman, Scream, The Faculty. And I'm trying to remember the last one because we were torn on a lot of them, but I think it was uh, People Under the Stairs. I mean, you. you oh just, yeah. I mean, now you're mentioning Faculty, and that's another property. Yeah. What a, I mean, you mentioned all the, like the properties I would love to see as mazes. Like, you got me. You got me sold, man. Just take all my. You can have all my money. Just take it all. You know, it's like you got me oh, sold, yeah. man. Well, it's funny. Uh, a lot of the movies that we discuss um, come from, oh, I would love to go to an event and see this movie as a maze. And we start thinking to ourselves, we're like, okay, what movies would make for a good haunt experience? And I know one of them in particular, we were talking about uh, the Frighteners recently. And we're like, oh, how cool would it be to be, go through a Frightener style maze? And then um, at our last production meeting, we actually laid out a plan because we're like, okay, we do want to eventually get to our original ideas. So we actually, we laid out a five-year plan and I, I can't tell you exactly what we're doing, but I will say in 2025, okay, that's our, uh, that's our 25th anniversary. We are planning to do an entire maze based after a single IP. It's not just different movie scenes. It's one IP and it's one of my absolute favorite horror films of all times. I saw it when I was in junior high in the theaters, freaked me out and I absolutely loved it. But I mean, can't, can't say what it is yet. <laughs> no, I love it. Keep it a secret. Cause I, I, <laughs> oh, I am a guy full. I love secrets. I like that. I think that build up just your fan base, just like, we're like, okay, now we got to keep going every year to see what these guys do until 2025. So you just, oh, yeah. you just sold your, your, your haunt Thanks. right there. If last year didn't sell it. Thanks. That just sold it right there, man. Yes. I'm, I'm now I'm, you got me, you got me sold for every year. I'll be there. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, I'm, I'm sold too. If I didn't want 2020 to end already, I would, I would now want it to end more. Well, is it 2025 yet? Yeah. You know. <laughs> no, so I'll, I'll tell you what, um, I, I wasn't planning to do this, but uh, since you guys like that kind of stuff, um, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and make an Instagram post for later tonight. I'll give uh, clues, just like I did with the Easter egg post. If you saw that, I'll just give very, that. very, very, very minute clues as to what they are kind of like, okay, guess what it is or guess what the theme is going to be. <laughs> Hold on, now now he's yeah. gonna give us clues. So I get to play Batman now. It's like I get to play the world's greatest detective. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm all for that. In fact, I can I can already think of the clue for 2025. Really? You got it? Yeah, yeah. I already have one. I was like, oh, that that was a no brainer. You ready for your clue? Let's go for it. Castle. That's castle. gonna. <laughs> now I gotta narrow down so many horror movies that feature castles, and it's just like, okay, all right. That's one. Exactly. All right. All right. I like That's it. That's a solid clue. Yep. There you go. Now for and all once the fans you, out there. Eventually, when you realize what the theme is later down the line and see what castle is, you're going to go, oh, okay. Uh, no. Sean, I just I just met you like 15 minutes ago. I already liked it. So like... I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Wait, so, so you're saying so this is going to be your 20th year then, right? Yeah, if this is our 20th that. year. Yeah. Okay. And how long have you been doing it? Because I, I don't think you've been able to be doing this for 20 years. I have been doing it for 20 years. <laughs> I wow, started I thought you were in... a lot younger. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> no, I, uh, I started in eighth grade. I started in eighth grade in Rancho Cucamonga, and it was super simple. Uh, the reason, what inspired me was when I started going to uh, Not Scary Farm with my dad. He took me for my first Not Scary Farm in 1998. And I remember I fell in love with it. I absolutely adored it. And then a few years later in 2000, I was like, you know, I can do this too. So I put on some crude makeup. I had this little hallway of trash bags that led up to, to my house. I'd scare them. They'd get their candy. They'd turn around and walk out. And then every year it just kept getting progressively bigger and bigger and bigger. And I think the first time I uh, realized how big it was going to be, it was our first IP maze. <laughs> we, did, uh, we did Saw Halloween, Friday the 13th um scream we had the stabathon from scream 4 since that movie had just come out but we had a ton of people that was our biggest year we had 19 uh characters all crammed into this tiny maze and i was dressed as uh the man in the mask from the strangers along with two other girls that were in the group that's Sam's but I favorite right there <laughs> oh nice <laughs> solid solid movie um, but I remember. I when... I'm gonna I'm gonna chime in for one second. Oh yeah. No. I will never live away from people 
because of that movie. <laughs> that's like the one I movie need that's... to go for help. Yeah, that's like the probably one movie that actually legitimately scares Sammy, like more than anything. Nice. <laughs> nice. But yeah, so um, I remember my dad, he comes in and he goes, hey, you need to see this. I'm like, what, did, did something happen? Did something go wrong? Um, so he pulls me out an emergency exit. I look down the street and everybody has formed a line about 12, 13 houses down the street. And I'm sitting there going, oh crap, what did I do? We're gonna get popular very fast. I'm cool <laughs> with this though, but holy crap. So, and then the next year we were like, oh, are we gonna do uh, IPs again? I was like, no, 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 we need to do something that'll freak everybody out. Let's do clowns. <laughs> yes <laughs> and it was worth it and the, the the best memory i have from the clown maze is here I, i'm um i was in a full uh face prosthetic it started right here and it went all the way into a bald cap to the back of my head my dad was out front and i just had to let him know something i think it was like hey pizza's on its way and i was just using my normal voice a 12 year old girl turned saw me screamed and ran down the street and like oh it's not going to be hard tonight not at all <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious, man. You I get... love I love guest reactions, man. It's like <laughs> they're the best, man. They really are. Like Oh heck yeah. Okay, I, we mean Sammy will just sit like last year at Knots, that's all we would do is just sit at Knots, just mm. watch people get scared. Like it was probably one of the funniest and, and fun things that we've ever done at a haunt, like ever. Mm -hmm. So we had a good time. Um so I'm a huge I mean, being a movie guy, I love watching movies. I'm a huge like behind the scenes guy. I love mm learning about behind the scenes, what it goes into to actually making one of these home haunts. So start us from the beginning, man. You you got uh, you guys sat down. You guys got your idea. You're like, all right, mm -hmm. this is what we're doing this year. What's next? What goes forward into the planning process for you guys? So what we do is what we, tr what we try to do, at least, is we want to have an idea of what we're going to do next year or at least kind of a blue sky idea before we begin construction for the current year. And everything changed, like I said, this last year when we had the meeting at the hotel and everything. But under normal circumstances, we would know exactly what we're going to do. And then after Halloween ends, we take two to three weeks to tear everything down and chill out and relax. And then first week of December, boom, we're right back into production meetings. And we're laying out uh, concept art ideas for uh, costuming. What are some of the unique scares that we're going to bring to the table? And then the big one, which we've been doing since 2015, is what is our one huge effect going to be in the maze? Because the first time we did that was uh, 2015. That was our uh, Mark I version of the elevator. And that freaked out everybody so bad. We were like, okay, we have to bring this back for next year. And then it eventually evolved into, well, wait, if we do the elevator every year, everyone's going to expect that. So what are some other ideas that we have? <laughs> and that's, that's usually the bulk of the conversation. And the one for next year is, I, it has ne it's been done in a certain way, but we're taking it up a few notches. <laughs> That's always good to hear, man. Yeah, Just so putting your own, your own creative twist on it. I love that. No, mm -hmm. I, I love Thanks. that so much. Um, so then from, of course, the planning stage, mm -hmm. you guys already in pre-production right now. Mm -hmm. What what goes next, man? You guys start drawing out concepts. You guys start, what do you guys start doing? Writing the script, mm -hmm. how you guys are going to organize it. What mm -hmm. goes next after that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, after that, we do actually go through a script. What we want to do is we want to see if there's any major storyline or heavy uh, video um, uh, filming, excuse me, and editing that we have to do that goes into the theming of the maze. Like, I think the last one that we that we had a lot of that with was Seance, because with Seance, we had to film a bunch of footage featuring the spirit hunters and security footage inside the maze and things like that. Um, if there's none of that, we just move straight on to, okay, what would be a really good trailer for it? And last year, um, we had a trailer, but unfortunately, due to time constraints, we, I wasn't able to finish editing it. So, But I did put that up on our YouTube channel. Um, this year, we've just been so preoccupied with, okay, what's going to happen now with this pandemic going on? We didn't have the time either to do a trailer. So I'm hoping that next year, with Fear Fest Grindhouse that we're able to do a solid trailer now that um, everything is sort of returning. So I want to say sort of returning to normal, but um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, we're trying. So next year with Fear Fest Grindhouse, since all of them are uh, original ideas, we're going to make fake trailers for those. So that's what we're in the process of right now. That's some Quentin Tarantino, Robert Rodriguez <laughs> beautifulness that I Thanks. love. I mean, when they did that Grindhouse double feature, that was just 
Oh yeah. <laughs> awesome. I mean, you had Planet Terror with um, what was it? Uh, what was that movie? I, I love that movie too. Uh, oh, uh, Death Proof. Death Proof. Yeah. Death Proof. Yep. Yeah, I know Kurt Russell, man. I mean, that's one of my favorite Tarantino movies. That's such a good movie. Same here. Oh this, yeah. That was the same concept. Is like they had all these fake trailers. Like even Rob Zombie came mm -hmm. on and did a fake trailer, and they had oh, all these yeah, people it was do these. Wonderful. Yeah, it was just it was great. Now you're like, mm -hmm. these are so cheesy that I want to see them now. I want to see oh, how they would yeah. come up. Like that's that's the beauty of Grindhouse. Is like they're mm -hmm. so beautiful. They're so like awesome that like they're so cheesy, but they're just so good. Like. It, yeah, they're amazing. I, I love the grindhouse style film, especially when you have that like you know, the the like the the seventy millimeter kind of uh, thirty millimeter on the freaking you know the, you see the film cutting away and stuff. Mm, I love yep. that. It's great. Um, and that's exactly what we're doing for our trailers next year. I'm excited. I am excited. If you need anyone as a background actor, I will happily die on screen. <laughs> <laughs> I will talk to one of my buddies because uh, he's in the process right now of writing up the trailer for uh, Dino Warriors of the Year 3000. Oh my God, that just sounds beautiful. <laughs> so uh, think of it as sort of um, Velocipaster meets Mad Max. <laughs> I love it. I'm, I'm in. <laughs> I'm excited. I am so excited for that. I No, I... <laughs> I am so looking forward to your haunting. Can that can <laughs> just come by? Like, you know, and then the next year, couple years, you got the five year plan. You got me hyped, man. Like, I am. You guys sound like, honestly, you guys are on like an HHN level of like creating. I love that. Like, you guys are just like, no, you guys are like legit professional. You guys know what you guys want to do. You guys start Thanks. in December and you go all year. Like, I love that, man. I mean, it takes Thanks. the time and effort. Like, I haven't even, you know, other than the Midsummer Scream preview that I saw, I have not like fully walked through one. And I'm just super stoked to be okay. able to do that. Like, I'm, nice. I'm, I can't wait for this year, honestly. You're hyping me up so oh, nice. much. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah. I, I just, I, when, you, when you guys came out this year on the, the live stream for mm -hmm. Midsummer Scream and you brought, you know, what you guys are going to be bringing um, in 2021 with the whole mm -hmm. Grindhouse. I was like, Tony, bro, <laughs> I thought they died, they did it big last year, but they're going bigger in 2021. Mm. Oh, yeah. Because I, I, I would have to say, like, that was one of the highlights of the Hall of Shadows is oh, it yeah. drew everyone's eye. The line was always pretty, pretty oh, long. Yeah. The mm -hmm. line was always oh, insane God. for that, that one. Like, you saw all, all the other ones, mm -hmm. you know, they had lines, but your guys's. Thanks. always had like the like the biggest line i always saw every day when we went that weekend mm -hmm. yeah it was yeah it was a it was a beauty and i was like man in 2021 we're gonna let it let it happen i want to be one of the first ones in <laughs> oh yeah we'll, gotta get my gold back that way can guarantee it. <laughs> oh yeah we're, we'll be happy to have you more than happy to have you i mean <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I you don't even have to sell me i'm there Thanks. Yeah. You guys yeah. No, are automatically. I, you guys made the list now. You guys are on like oh, Chris you. Jericho. You know Chris Jericho. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. You, know, you guys just made, you the, made list. the list. <laughs> yeah. Uh, nice. But it's a good list, not a bad list. This is a oh good yeah, that's list. good. This yeah. is the list that. All right. This is something yeah. we have to do, no matter what the schedule is. We're squeezing mm -hmm. them in, no matter <laughs> what. <laughs> so it's funny you mentioned the uh, the facade because that was that was one of the questions that was raised at our recent production meetings. It's how big do we get before we go? Holy crap! This is way too big. And there's times when we're like, okay, that's that's a little more than we could chew. Let's scale it back. But now that we've done the marquee and now we're planning the drive-in theater, we're like, we're a bit more comfortable with it. And so, um, in our five-year plan, 2024 might be our tallest facade. <laughs> oh, uh, again, can't tell you what the theme is, but I will give you a hint. Um, Times Square. Times Square. Look at he's dropping Times the Square. clues and hits again. <laughs> I like it though. I mean, it makes me, nice. as the years get closer, as more clues will drop. And then that's when you start. Oh yeah. No, there's uh, th on our Instagram, we already have it planned out. We're like, okay, okay. So as we're in the middle of fear fest grand house, I'm just going to drop a picture. That's like a really obscure hint for the following year. So <laughs> now I know now, now that yeah, I know exactly. that, I'm just going to start looking for like, it's going to be all advertisement for this year's. And then out of nowhere, that one is just going to throw you off. Yeah, like, exactly. That's a clue. It's going to be like November 1st. I'm like, hey, guess what we're doing next year? <laughs> <laughs> so, Sammy, you know. All I know is if Tony doesn't find all five Easter eggs, I don't know if I'll ever talk to him again. <laughs> Sammy, let's be real. You probably wouldn't even find all five Easter eggs. I, that's true. I'll be terrified. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I'm looking at is 
Where's the actor coming from? Yeah. I can't handle Oh, that's going to be hilarious. <laughs> it's like, honestly, like, no, so, Sammy, I'm telling you right now, you're going to have to plan your trip out when they open their haunt next year. And especially oh, if you're yeah. screen next heck year, yeah. we're going to definitely be hitting you guys up. and, and Oh, heck yeah. Going Sounds great. Um, oh, yeah. But if you guys want some easy scares and I bring Sammy, Sammy is an easy target. So feel free to oh, okay. just throw the scares at him. You don't even have to try. You yeah, can just stand there and I might already be scared. <laughs> Oh uh, no, we love. What I'll do is I'll I'll show her a stilt walker your picture and go, hey, see this guy? Go for that guy. <laughs> this oh, is your target God. for tonight. <laughs> I think I'm already sick for 2021. <laughs> I don't know if I can make it. <laughs> nice. oh, well, you you got to come to 2021 now so you can see what our super secret big effect is now. <laughs> the grindhouse, oh, man. Great. Come on. Oh you yeah, can't... it's going to be in our grand grindhouse is going to be the our uh, our new effect that's uh, replacing the elevator. So. That, and then, you know what I find awesome is that you guys are actually, like, starting to test stuff, like, now, years prior, just to see, like, okay, oh, yeah. when it comes time to really put this in action, is it going to work? And I, and I think that's awesome because you don't see a lot of people actually will put the time to do that, you know? It's like, mm -hmm. if it doesn't work, then they just give up on it. But you guys are like, no, we want this to work, and this is, like, if this is going to make the maze, like – a really big, you know, big point of the maze. Like, we really want this to work. So mm -hmm. I think it's cool that you guys are taking the time to actually, you know, test stuff out and always try new things and don't not being afraid to, oh, yeah. to try new things, which is mm -hmm. a big thing in, in, in life. It's always trying new things to see if, if it works or not. I mean, mm -hmm. if it works, then great. You have an amazing effect. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't, don't give up on it. Keep trying, and oh, yeah. hopefully it will work mm -hmm. eventually to your liking, you know, and you just can mm -hmm. hold it back for another year. Maybe we can try it again next year with something else, you know, yeah. so. Mm -hmm. I think and that's it, it's awesome. really cool you mentioned that because uh, we the last year that we went without a huge effect this uh, obviously we don't have a huge effect this year even if we did have the elevator we weren't going to use it because we didn't want everybody close together right um, but the last time that we actually didn't have an effect was 2017 during dark Christmas we were working on an effect called um, it's codename was Star Trek and we tried so hard to make that work for two years in a row ultimately it just wasn't going to work and then when the santa annas picked up it destroyed the prototype and we we're like you know what let's go back to the drawing board we can figure this out easier and then all of a sudden our uh, maze foreman john he comes up to me in a production meeting and he goes hey i solved our problem he showed me his drawings i'm like come on really that's what we could have done <laughs> It's usually the easiest the things that you don't notice that are probably like right there. You're just like, oh, oh my yeah. God. Oh man, we had this elaborate system rigged up so that way it would work and it would work flawlessly. And then all of a sudden, oh yeah, we could have just bought this on Home Depot. <sighs> really? <laughs> you guys are already stressed out, working hard, trying to get stuff, and then you guys, you guys figure oh, it yeah. out. And it's just like, come on. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. And that's the beauty of it. I mean, uh, especially with the elevator. Oh my dear God, the that elevator. I loved it, but we also hated it at the same time because of how bulky it is and how much it broke down. Uh, the The first version that we had broke down constantly. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. Just like a, how, how, go, it's just like the Indiana it, Jones freaking Jeep always breaking down, you know what I mean? <laughs> Basically. Such iconic. Uh, how large is your production team? Um, it's usually me and about three or four others. But most of the time, it's just me and my buddy John just in the backyard messing around, seeing what'll work. Uh, last year when we were doing build for um, Fear Fest 89, uh, it was me and him. We got the maze set up by ourselves in about five, six days. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Nice. And that, that was yes. another thing I was going to ask. So usually after you guys have everything said and done, hmm. what, what's the next step? Do you guys go for straight? Do you guys buy all your props first? Do you guys you know, start laying it out and then start building? Or do you, what do you guys do in that, for, or that order of stuff? So what we do at that point is my buddy John goes in, uh, he uses specialized software to create a layout of the maze. And then we actually go into the uh, backyard to see if everything will work the way it's supposed to. And if everything lines up the way it's supposed to, we can then go room by room and figure out, okay, what props are going to go into this room? Uh, who's going to be in that room and so forth. And then it's usually just trial and error, seeing who's a better fit for it. Um, a good example would be Poltergeist last year. Uh, the bone demon, the guy on stilts in the morph suit, he's a stilt walker. And so originally we were going to have him in another room. I can't, I can't recall. I think he was going to be in Evil Dead 2. But then we realized, wait, what if he was the bone demon from Poltergeist and he ran at you as soon as you came through the TV and we're like, hey, that's a fit right there. Um, and then other times there's so many ideas that end up being cut from a room. So aliens, for example, we had a uh, hanging harness 
that a monster would drop down from uh, about 18 feet from Seance. And what we were originally going to do was we were going to string up a dummy with an alien head on it to repel down above guests at the end of that hallway to make it look like another Xenomorph was coming at you. And ultimately we were like, you know, we've got the elevator, this would be way too much. And sure enough, it did end up being too much. And we're happy that we didn't bring it because we ran out of room in the truck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, aliens for me, I can tell you this, mm -hmm. I am terrified of face huggers. Terrified oh. <laughs> of face huggers. <laughs> I am. And I've always looked at aliens like, my, my, me and my dad, if it wasn't for my dad, I don't think I would nearly be into the stuff that I am. Like, he introduced nice. me to the world of sci-fi. I mean, you know, horror. I mean, we, we grew up comic book fans. You know, my dad's a big Superman fan. So he introduced me to this world. And I remember the first time we sat down and watched Aliens together. And he was like, you see the aliens? You know what they remind me of? He goes, aliens, if you really think about it, are like cockroaches. All they do is just run around, eat and produce more babies and literally that's what the mm -hmm. aliens do run around yeah, kill much. and produce more aliens which i was like yeah they're pretty much space cockroaches it's like that's not so yeah i mean when i when i when i like for example when i went to the maze at horror nights when they did alien versus predator they mm -hmm. had a whole room of just face huggers and i'm like mm, get me I the hell that. out of here i can't do this like i was like I had everything close to me. I was like, I don't want nothing touching me. <laughs> Just hurry up and walk. And of course the line was going real slow. I'm like, can this mm. get any faster? Like, so, I mean, I think aliens for me is always just a, a fun thing. Cause I know for certain, no matter what, either if it's a face hugger or a xenomorph, they creep the hell out of me. So it's like, I know for a I fact, gotcha. that's going to be a scary thing. So I thought that was cool. When you mentioned you guys have this whole software where you guys can pretty much lay it out and everything. Mm -hmm. um, that's really awesome. So after you guys have this all said and done, mm -hmm. is it, then is that when it starts getting to the builds or what, what mm -hmm. goes next? Yeah, that's when we start doing uh, prefabrication. So what we do is we go out, we take a look at our walls, we see, okay, which what can what is already painted that can be reused from the last year? And then if it needs to be painted, we'll just go ahead and lay it down. And that's when we begin painting away. Um, we'll take a look at our props. We'll see what, uh, what we have that's held over, what we need to get. Sometimes um, we need to get really, really specific props. So for this year, for Phantom of the Opera, we, there was no prosthetic available for Lon Chaney's Phantom of the Opera, which was a little disheartening because I really wanted that actor to be in prosthetic makeup. And then I found a movie quality uh, latex mask that was made from a life mold of Lon Chaney. And I was like, oh, this will be awesome. And so that's that's one of the specialty items, which I'm really happy to have. But those are the items you kind of go, oh, we can only use it for this year, you know, things like that. Um, I know last year we tried really hard to find a recreation of a pulse rifle for aliens. And it just cheapest I could find was three, four hundred dollars. I couldn't justify buying that just for one year. And so me and my buddy Key, we downloaded a bunch of pictures from the movie, went out with a Nerf gun and, a sh and got a bought an airsoft shotgun, molded it all together, and we're like, hey, looks just like it. <laughs> Those are the best ones, though, man. I mean, now oh, that, yeah. I mean, do you still have that gun today? Oh, yeah. It's chill in my garage. <laughs> that is legit. I mean, that, I think that's the cool thing about all these, like, you're telling me all these, like, the cool thing about it is, like, even if you never use it, it's always just a good to have a good collection of stuff. Oh, yeah. Because people are going to come over oh, and be absolutely. like, that is cool. Where'd you get that? Oh, yeah, I made that. <laughs> like, it, it doesn't look spot on. Like, I'd be like, oh, yeah. you made that? That looks beautiful. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> can I hire you to make me one? Because, shit, man, I'd be all over that. Like, I'm all I for that. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Um, so, mm -hmm. going into this year, man, talk to yeah. us a little bit. Give us a little bit of a sneak preview for what, what guests can experience for – 2020s haunt okay so the big one that i'm really excited for is the facade is coming back but it's not like how you remember it right. uh i don't know if you saw the last instagram post that we did but there's a lot of battle damage on it nice. the reason being is you're walking right into london 1941 at the height of the blitz when the germans are bombing the city oh. and the theater is there's going to be signs all over it saying that the theater has is being used as a fallout shelter for the public in the case of a bombing. And so at that point, with the theming, it's do I go into the theater and risk being torn apart by these monsters, or do I stay out here and risk getting bombed by the Germans? <laughs> I love that you mixed Thanks. World War II history with 
a haunt. Like that's two nice. of my favorite <laughs> things. Like I think one of my favorite <laughs> nice. wars to always learn about is World War II because there's so much mm -hmm. knowledge about. So now that just got me even more excited. <laughs> That's yeah, awesome. so um, unlike the uh, unlike last year, so you're gonna love this uh, even more. Uh, unlike last year, where we had movie posters of uh, all the movies up, we're gonna have World War II propaganda posters. Even we're gonna have, and I, I've got one right now. Do you want to see one? Oh, please. Yeah. So this one just came in the mail. Uh, this is gonna be out front. So. That is so cool. <laughs> Thanks. I love that. I mean, I think that's <sighs> I, the theming outside is like you're going into this theater going to get a whole different experience but the outside has a story of its own which i think is mm -hmm. really cool oh yeah and we're going the whole nine yards of it we're going to have the propaganda posters we've got the emergency lights because unlike uh last year where you just kind of walked up to the theater um because we're doing scare groups now that gives us the opportunity to make the lead up to the theater a bit more theatrical so we took all of our brick walls and we made an alleyway so it looks like you're snaking through the alleyways of london with emergency lights flickering you're going to hear the radio broadcasts the bombs dropping air raid sirens going off and then when you finally get up you're going to see the what was a pristine movie facade uh, movie theater facade from last year riddled with bullet holes fire damage part of the marquee has been broken uh, sandbags in front. We have we're gonna have an anti aircraft gun on top of the theater, things like that. Oh wow, that sounds mm -hmm. beautiful. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> where has this haunt been all my life? <laughs> I was like, do I, do I, do I, how much money do I have in my bank account? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do I make my way to California? <laughs> Oh man, that no, that sounds amazing. I can't wait to really see yeah. that. I really can't. Like it, mm -hmm. it it's gonna be awesome. Oh yeah, we're we're really excited for it. I've been wanting to tie in World War II into a haunt for some time, but at the same time, it was how do I do this where it's tasteful and respectful instead of just going the stereotypical route? Because um, last production meeting we had, they uh, we agreed the easy way out is to just oh just make all of the monsters Nazis. I'm like, I'm that's been done. <laughs> Yeah. That really has been done. <laughs> no, definitely. Um, so, uh, will we see Winston Churchill somewhere in there? No, but you're going to hear his voice. <laughs> the famous, uh, the mm -hmm. famous speech that we hear in the beginning of uh, Aces High from Iron Maiden. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, <laughs> I love that. No, that's, I think that's like I always tell my uncle, and he's a history teacher, so I tell him this specifically. I'm like, oh, I'm nice. sorry, dude, but I've learned more history through Iron Maiden than I have through a history teacher. There you go. <laughs> you know, it's like. <laughs> I mean, I've obviously been nice. seeing the British's point of view from it, but you know, I mean, I, you know, it's no, history, it's, history, it's, history. Yeah, it's, um, it's a good point of view to have. Yeah. Yeah. So, what uh, for for the people that don't know, what films can we expect to see inside the maze? Uh, you are going to be going through the sewers from Phantom of the Opera, uh, the coffin room slash uh, chamber from Dracula, Frankenstein's laboratory, the forest from the Wolfman, and the tomb of the mummy. Such Ooh. great mm -hmm. properties right there, man. I yeah, I'm really excited for this. <laughs> oh man, I mean, you're gonna oh, yeah. give me my fix because you know, you know, Universal does the Universal Monster Maze every year. So oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, you're continuing that fix with another Universal Monster Maze, which I love. Mm -hmm. um, I can't wait, man. So, oh, yeah, same here. Uh, for those who don't know, can you you want to share the dates of when you're going when you're up and operational? How many days you're going? Yeah, we're going to be doing uh, two days. We're doing Friday, October 30th, and uh, Saturday, uh, Halloween night, October 31st. However, we are doing scare groups. I believe the last time I checked, we have three scare groups available for the 30th. And at this point, I'm just like, okay, I know it's Haunter and Media Night, but if y'all wanted to just message me on Instagram, we'll try to squeeze you in for those last three groups. And then Halloween night, I think we have four, maybe maybe five groups left, but we are going to have a number of limited uh, walk-up groups available. And then if you come between the hours of 10 and 11, there's no square groups uh, needed. You can just walk right up. Sounds awesome, man. Mm -hmm. I know we're going to be there uh, for media night and we're mm -hmm. definitely, yep. I'm definitely going to want to talk to you after I walk through it. Just so oh, heck yeah. Can, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely, <laughs> definitely. Gonna, I, I want to talk with you and talk <laughs> with you yeah. outside of just filming stuff. Like, just talk with you, man. <laughs> Sounds good. I mean, I'm excited. Uh, one last thing I want to ask before we go. I mean, yeah, sure. obviously, this has been a tough year for everyone as far as mm -hmm. the haunt community and everything with, you know, the whole COVID-19 and everything. Uh, mm -hmm. Just so people know, mm -hmm. I mean, what is the uh, overall plans this year for uh, – how was it working around that this year, and what was your plan for uh, – how you're about, how you're gonna make the maze safe environment for every all guests and scare actors? 
So with the reservations, it's going to help uh, promote social distancing with every group that goes through. After every group, we're going to go through with cancel Lysol and just give everything a once over, make sure that everything is clean and sanitized. Uh, we are not going to have anything dangling in front of guests' faces. Uh, so there's no curtains, there's no uh, things on strings that you have to push through. Um, it, that one was probably the most difficult because we always have a curtain in front of the doors to make sure people don't look in. So we had to get clever with our design to make sure that nobody can look in with that. Uh, in addition to that, all of the monsters are going to be wearing face, face masks or they're going to be behind uh, plexiglass. Some of our monsters are going to be socially distanced, which led to some creative scares that we had to do. Um, in addition to that, we're asking everybody, please come with a face covering. You are not going to be let in unless you're wearing a face covering. I feel safe already. I mean, there you go. <laughs> I, you know, I know I do. I really do. Um, yeah, thanks. As you know, as we were doing this entire podcast, one thing I hope can maybe happen in the future with mm -hmm. a lot of uh, we talked to a lot of home haunters, and there's you guys are just so creative when it comes down to thanks. these. I mean, it, it's just unreal. Some I honestly think there's times where you guys actually do better work than what you see at the theme parks. Mm -hmm. And I'm just I'm that's my opinion though. I really do think there's some properties that I've seen at theme parks where I was just very disappointed. But when you look at the the home haunting side of it, like there's a lot of passionate love that goes into these. Um, one day, what I hope happens is because I know everyone loves like the whole um, like a lot of the home haunters love doing this every year. Is maybe like let's get some of the greatest and best home haunters out there and let's let's put together a massive <laughs> event. Just everyone so gets down. to <laughs> everyone gets to have their own you know do their maze and then. You have a team that comes in to create scare zones, and I think it could be – that can honestly be awesome. Like, just hear me out on that. You have you guys. You know, you have Thanks. Bloodshed Brothers there. You have all these other home haunts. You know, there's so many to name. Just come out. Yeah, and, I, think I think there's something already there almost. I think it's called almost, the Hall of Shadows. The Hall of Shadows. I know, but I want, like, a full-on event for these guys like in October. Order, yeah. You know, yeah, that yeah. way they can get their name out there for the entire season of October and maybe put the other places like not out of business, but show them like, Hey, we got some stuff to show you too. <laughs> Definitely. That, that'd be awesome. I would absolutely love to do that. <laughs> yeah, I know. So yeah. other home haunters, if you're watching, like I'm just saying, like I threw the idea out there. If you guys can make that happen, I think the horror community would come. They really would. Yeah. I, you know, we love our, we love ourselves some haunts and you guys do amazing work. Everybody works on their own maze someone comes in to do scare zones like it can work perfectly i think so just throwing that idea out there maybe it'll happen in the future maybe it won't but the idea is out there so gotta shoot your shot you gotta shoot your shot you know <laughs> i'd be yeah. happy to sponsor that any way i can whatever money if i have to go broke sponsoring it i will <laughs> <laughs> um sean thank you so much for coming on the show today give us a behind the scenes a look back and of course a uh, a sneak peek of what's going on this year and a little very little sneak peek of what's going to be happening in the next five years so oh, yeah super stoked you got our support i, I can't wait nice. to go uh Thank to you. media night and, and check it out and mm -hmm. I, i'm i'm just super stoked to you i mean you really sold it for me and I, I hope you sold it for the rest of the audience i i really mm -hmm. think it's going to be a, a good year for you guys another great year um 20th anniversary too that's huge so mm -hmm. oh yeah that's going to be a, a fun time man so uh, do you want to plug any of your social media where they can find you? And if they want more details, uh, where can they find you at? Yeah, they can find us on uh, Facebook. It's just direct society and same with Instagram direct society. And we have a YouTube channel where you can actually see flow throughs of some of our past mazes and some, uh, behind the scenes footage and uh, teaser trailers and a bunch of other stuff just related to us. It's really cool. Awesome, man. I mean, October 30th, that's where you want to be the direct society. Mm-hmm bringing in the World War II style Universal Monsters. I love it. Can't wait to see it, guys. Uh, Sean, again, thank you. I know you have really busy man right now, especially coming towards the uh, closer and closer to opening date, but I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to talk with us and talk with our fans and hopefully gain more people's interest to come to your guys' event, man, because it's going to be a really good one. I promise you guys this, and I haven't even been to the event, Sounds and I'm great. already promising you it's going to be a good one. The promise um, you can keep, I I know oh, that. yeah. I mean, look at Sammy. I can tell Sammy was super excited. He's already excited for next year's, man. Like, so. You're excited for the one uh, five years from now. Oh, I know. He's excited for the one five years from now. We don't even know what it is. We just got one word, and it was castle. So, I mean. Yeah, exactly. You know? Um, but, yeah, and one last thing, like, we've been telling all the home haunters, because it is very important for us this year. It was, like I said, very been a very hard year for everyone uh, with almost a, a full cancellation of haunt season. But it's mm -hmm. because of you guys. Yeah. You guys are keeping Halloween alive. 
and we we can't thank you guys enough for that and we appreciate you guys keeping the spirit of Halloween alive because without you guys I don't think we'd get our Halloween fix at all this year and like I keep saying this is the year of, of the home haunts man you guys a lot of people's eyes are going to be uh, turning to you guys and mm -hmm. you guys are going I think you guys are going to kill it everyone we've talked to Thanks. is going in with a positive mindset and I think it's just you guys are fans so you guys are making something for the fans and it, it's just it's we, we just can't thank you guys enough. So Nights of Horror to you, to all the home haunters out there, thank you so much for keeping Halloween alive. We, we can't stress that enough. Um, we love each and every one of you, and we hope everyone stays safe out there. But, Sean, thank you so much again for, like I said, being on the show. And we can't wait to check out The Haunt later this year, or later this month, actually. Yeah. My head's <laughs> yeah, all over the place right now. <laughs> no, it's all good. Thanks for having me, guys. It's been awesome. Awesome. So, yeah. I, I appreciate everything. Oh, yeah, we, we look forward to going out there. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you guys enjoyed today's episode, make sure to hit that like button and that subscribe button with that bell notification. Be aware every time we put up a video. Follow follow them on uh, Instagram, Facebook. Check them out on YouTube, Direct Society. You're not going to want to miss this this year, man. This is going to be a very good uh, very good one, and I promise you guys this. Uh, if you guys see us at The Haunt, come say hi. You can probably be in our video because we will happily do that for you guys. But nonetheless... Thank you guys so much for watching. Of course, follow us on social media. Sammy, what's the social media? Uh, Twitter is Nights of Horror. Instagram is at The Nights of Horror. He got it right today. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, we look forward to seeing what comes in the next week. I hope you guys are enjoying our content for haunt season. And we love you guys. Stay safe out there. And we will see you guys next week. Peace.